<clears throat> ba 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 <clears throat> ba. So apparently those are both things that detracted from the fact that Ultramarines was fucking god awful. It's such a good day to die when you know the reasons why. Citizens, we fight for what is right. A noble sacrifice when duty calls, you pay the price for the Federation. I will give my life for the Federation. I will give my life. SimCity 2000. This is about as perfect as a Sim game as it gets. Sure, it's not the first, that was on the NES, but it was also mostly an experiment in the genre. SimCity 2000, however, is rife with personality, nuance, and real-world parallels. Attracting people to your city requires creating a job market, which can be completed with great industrial plots and tracks. You require power plants and water pumps to keep proper living conditions and attract more sims, just like in real life. As a developing city, however, you have to place environmental concerns as you build highly pollutive plants and industries to get your economy up and running, just like in real life. As a starter, I also recommend naming your town something comical. It's gonna pay dividends in the future. At all points during your mayoral experience, the game fills itself with so much personality that you can't wait for the next newspaper article. Most of the articles are just for laugh, but when there's something critical about the city going on, the game doesn't hesitate to let you know. Take this comically eye-catching article, for example. This is Commissar with a special Fuck Saw City News report. Dinosaurs turn blue. The Dinosaurs, an astute straight gang has changed coats this week. Recognizing the trend toward law and order, the group has volunteered to patrol avenues after dark, assisting local police forces. Here we are on scene with permanently reformed thief, Andrea Werner. Yo, we seen what happened to the dictaphones and the cousins? We ain't gonna end up in the slammer. Don't tell anyone I said that. Weeping one moment and snarling the next, a bereaved grandfather burst into song over the news. That was almost verbatim from one of the newspaper articles that the game throws at you. The templates are generated based on what happens in your town, and then the event names and actions are randomly inserted to make every SimCity experience wholly unique. <laughs> what? What's with me and defenestration? Dude, I know the feel. I can't go a day without knocking a guy through a window. While the early stages of the game can feel a little droll due to having to wait for money, being able to speed up the game to cheat a setting means you have to wait about 5 seconds for a new year, which negates the problem completely. You can also entertain yourself by naming things in your city interesting things, or you can spice things up by calling disasters down on your hapless citizens. After all, I'm the mayor. Clearly I'm allied with legions of darkness. Clean energy? This thing really is a monster! Ironically, your biggest enemy in this game is the terrain. High mountains and uneven ground make for miserable city planning, so you end up spending thousands of simoleons paving the fuckers down. Nothing is forcing you to do this, however, and I myself like to keep a certain formation of my own development projects. I wonder what elections are like in SimCity 2000. Mayor Kristoff, 2013. If you vote for me, Mayor Kristoff, I promise I will place giant signs on our streets that feature clever forms of profanity. I will turn on the no disaster setting and cut funding from the fire department for maximum profit. Your pledges will allow me to place a stadium on each corner for teams like Alabama Butt Launcher and the New England Prolapse. Mayor Kristoff 2013 for the city of Fuck Sauce. You don't have a choice. So next election, make sure you vote for me, Mayor Kristoff. If you want to, however, you can also cheat to have the game give you 2,000 simoleons instantly. Just type Cass anywhere during the game. Uh, I don't know about this. What do you think, Mr. Dawson? Yeah, let me just take over for a second. I'm gonna make it better. No! First, we need some funds. F-U-N-D-S. Yeah, baby! Joel, don't! Oh, God! Shit, 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 shit! Luckily, if you demolish buildings surrounding the fire and create a wall of rubble, the fire won't spread. At least we know not to make this mistake again. SimCity loves to keep you on your feet. Never will you have a dull moment in this game. Whether you're planning out more and more of your city, or finding that goddamn traffic copter and sniping it down. 
I just realized that I may have blazed over the most timeless part of this game. The music in this is a perfect capsule for all of life's emotions. There are mixtures of smooth jazz, melancholy, mild and upbeat tones, almost a whole spectrum. While endless sequels of this game constantly try to improve on its gameplay and content, the sound is something they will never be able to trump. This game's MIDI files stay with you for a lifetime. SimCity 2000 teaches you about life on a global spectrum, how waves of actions can affect the lives of hundreds, how the power and will of leaders can take societies to comfort and glory. And as I watch over the horizon of my own city, with its murky brown sky and bleached buildings, the sounds of SimCity resonate, letting me know that however bad it can get today, there will always be a new dawn and a new day for us to repair and improve. Sim Tower is a game that completely stumped me when I first played it growing up. It sort of has the same initial problems as SimCity 2000, where if you don't know what rustles this game's jimmies, you're pretty much doomed to bankruptcy. The game starts you off with three room options, condominiums, fast food restaurants, and office spaces. Logically, for a self-sustaining building, you should have a balance between these structures, right? After all, when you look at the background of the only screen in the game, it looks like your tower is situated miles outside of the city, so it only makes sense to turn your structure into an arco. Well, if you thought like that, then you thought like an idiot. But condominiums are essentially placed into the game as a beginner's trap. They give you only a one-time money bonus as you can't rent them and condo owners are extremely picky about noise and stress conditions, meaning that they're soon going to move out which means you have to demolish the whole place. It takes a little more critical thinking to make a successful tower. You have to realize that this is a sim game, it simulates real life. What's something that everyone needs in order to survive in the real world? Not something abstract or existentialist. Put your keyboards down, you spoiled hipsters, because the answer is a job. Building office spaces is the best way to start off your tower. You can pretty much win the game by building nothing but office spaces. They fill up instantly, they give you back a quarter of their cost and provide you with another quarter every week. Then pretend that this office space is your daily work area. What's something that you need every day? This trend of logic leads you to build the fast food restaurants, which get filled to the brim during the lunch hours, and otherwise get a steady stream of one or two people coming in at after hours. Or as entertaining as a sim game that it is, it isn't perfect. It's not imperfect like Red Alert either, where its flaws endear it to the gamer. At its core, this is pretty much Elevators, the game. In order to keep your rent up each week, you need to make sure that your tower goers are kept stress-free and happy, or else they'll set up office space elsewhere. However, my experience with the game has taught me that really the only way sims develop stress is by having to wait for their elevators to show up. Yeah, condo owners and hotel tenants complain about noise, but the former are useless in the long run, and hotel rooms can only be built until your tower reaches two stars, which isn't possible until you have a good budget going. You can build stairs, but sims will only take them up three floors to get to that destination. Uh, but at the early levels, you can sort of circumvent this by shutting off elevators to the first three floors. Yeah, that's right, fuckers. You can walk. Other than that, you're relegated to micromanage these fucking shafts, adding more and more cars and organizing their home floors so that they return to levels with high traffic. You also have to adjust the wait times for elevators, otherwise only empty ones will pick up sims. Just like in real life, there's always that one fucknut who takes an elevator all to himself. Don't be that guy. Another huge problem in this game is the music. While SimCity 2000 has iconic music that stays with you forever, SimTower has no music. Instead, it fills you with the insanity of office crowds, elevator noises, and restaurant chatter. Luckily, you can turn off the sound, and if you're cool like me, you can turn on music or vlogs in the background while you manage your tower. In addition, the fast mode in this game doesn't do anything. Going back to SimCity again, you can speed up time by turning on the cheetah setting while you wait for more cash to come in. SimTower's fast mode just makes this game go at a manageable speed. You can still build new rooms, elevator cars and stuff without losing any time between. However, since rooms build pretty much instantly, you'll spend most of your game time just waiting for more money to come in. 
which leads me to the last problem of this game. It's too easy. The only upkeep you have to pay is to run your elevators and sometimes for your housekeeping crew and staff. The game even gives you more money when Santa visits you on Christmas and when you find buried treasure on the ground. Once you figure out the nuances of the game, you're pretty much left waiting. So go to your balcony, light up a cigarette, and enjoy the little ant farm of your tall tower. So leaving this game on a whole workday later, I pretty much have so much money that I can build whatever I want. I also got to three stars, which is when the game starts to get a little more interesting. You can start turning your tower into more of a mall, plonking down movie theaters, shops, restaurants, and a parking lot. The hotel system is about as complicated as the room gets, as the rooms have to be managed by cleanliness from your housekeeping staff, and have to be kept at least a floor away from noisy rooms. However, since the game never tells you what rooms generate noise, I have circumvented this by placing it above the lobby, which can be built every 15 floors. I even built a few condominiums so that I can get my population to get my 4 star rating. At this point though, since you have access to almost 90% of this game's rooms, things start to get a little bit droll. The game vainly tries to break up the monotony with events like buried treasure, Santa Claus, but the most exciting event comes when you get this message. A bomb in my tower? I know exactly what to do. Remember when we first met John McClain? Argyle picked him up from the plane and took him down the Nakatomi Tower to meet with Holly. He came to get her back and to be her man, but Hans and his buddies fucked up the plan. And that's about when everything went sour at the Christmas party. And the terrorists were the worst zealous, but they were sweet when they killed Ellis. And with a little help. God damn it! This is another one of those beginner's traps. The game pacifies you with its easiness, which leads you to believe you can handle the bomb threat no problem. After all, I have at least three security stations and my guards are patrolling every floor. It's kind of a catch-22. You have so much money that you can easily pay off the terrorists and make it back in a few game days. But the game is so easy that it lulls you into thinking Hans Gruber isn't a threat. Hmm. My jaded opinion really doesn't give this game the justice it deserves. It still holds up today. There really aren't many games that emulate it or are able to compete with it. Later, the designer Yute Sato recreated the game closer to his vision and called it Yute Tower. However, that game is doomed to obscurity due to not being able to get a commercial release in North America, as Sim Tower never became successful enough to warrant redistribution. So those are my opinions and descriptions of two classic Maxis games that formed my childhood and helped me develop a greater awareness of the world around me. An awareness that people at my current age still sadly lack. Hopefully you'll check these games out. They're available free for download with DOSBox attached if you go to old-games.com. Fellow viewers, it's been a pleasure. Till next time. Yippee -ki -yay!